the CHA Mark 40 electron beam evaporator is used to coat samples with various metals. During a process, a high intensity beam of electrons is focused on the center of a crucible containing a specified source metal. The energy from the electron beam causes the source metal to evaporate. The evaporated metal will then coat the surface of a sample with a thin layer. Unlike sputtered films, evaporators only coat the surface facing away from the substrate. Electron beam evaporators will provide very little coating to the sides of any features that are perpendicular to the surface of the substrate. The CHA E-beam evaporator is equipped to evaporate titanium, chromium, gold, nickel, platinum, aluminum, and copper. It can be used to evaporate most other metals as well. The machine has the ability to hold several 3-inch wafers or three 4-inch wafers during a process run. There are also 4-inch blanks available for attaching smaller samples too. In a typical process, the chamber is pumped down to a high vacuum to increase the mean free path of the gas molecules. The mean free path is the average distance the molecule travels before it collides with another molecule. Higher mean free path means that more metal atoms travel from the evaporation source to the substrate without interruption from air molecules. Let's now go over the various parts of the CHA E-beam evaporator. The crucible selector moves the selected crucible into position for evaporation. The fixture controller controls the rotation and speed of the sample holder. The deposition controller allows the user to set up program, start, and stop the E-beam system. The XY sweep controller controls the position of the electron beam. For proper operation, the beam must move in a circle inside the crucible. The beam should not touch the edges of the crucible. Finally, the touchscreen monitor is located above all of the other controls and has various functions. The chamber and cryopump pressure can be viewed at the top right corner of the screen. Venting and pumping down the chamber are controlled on the screen, as well as enabling the process and controlling the shutter. The shutter is closed while the metal that is being evaporated is heated. Once the metal is evaporating at the correct rate, the shutter is opened, exposing the sample to evaporation. Once the desired amount of metal has been deposited, the shutter is closed to prevent further deposition. Before you can begin using the CHA E-beam evaporator, you must first log in to the system at the access controller. Once you have done this, you may begin operation. To begin loading your samples, you must first vent the chamber. On the monitor, press the vent icon at the bottom of the screen. It will take a few minutes for the chamber to fully vent. When the chamber has finished venting, gently pull the chamber door towards you and then slide it down to its resting position. Samples need to be placed into a sample tray before loading into the machine. Ensure that the sample is facing down in the tray, since only the bottom side will be exposed to the evaporation source. You should also make sure that the flat edge of each wafer is aligned with the recessed area in the wafer cutout. This will ensure that your sample is properly positioned in the sample tray and that the evaporated metal is distributed evenly throughout the process run. To load the sample plate into the chamber, slide the dowel pin on the rotor straight up and guide the plate onto the rotor straight, then release the dowel pin. At this point, you should check to see if the shutter is working properly. To do this, switch the shutter control to open. If the shutter is functioning properly, switch the shutter control back to close when you are done testing. You should now select the metal you will be using for your process run. You can select the crucible by turning the source selector knob on the gun rotation control. The rocker switch should be set to manual position in order to manually select the desired crucible. Turn the source selector knob to the first metal you will be using. For the purposes of this training video, we will be using titanium. When the selected crucible is in position, make sure that it is centered in the wedge-shaped exposure area. Check to see if the viewing mirrors are aligned correctly. You should be able to see the crucible underneath the shutter in the mirror. You should now take the time to vacuum in and around the chamber. It is important to clean up any debris prior to a process run. A clean chamber will ultimately result in a smoother process run and better results. Vacuuming around the threshold of the chamber will also help the chamber door to form a better seal when the system is pumping down. At this point, you should activate the fixture rotation on the CAJ fixture control. Turn the speed control knob to 20 rotations per minute. 
With the rotor straight spinning, carefully lift the chamber door up to the closed position to seal the door. Put the chamber under vacuum by selecting the pump down icon on the monitor. It may take up to a minute for the system to start pumping down. To begin programming the deposition controller, press F6 for program on the keypad, then press F2 for process directory. The controller will display a list of materials. You will need to set up each material that you are going to use during your process run. Use the arrow keys on the keypad to highlight the material you want to set up. Press F5 for process to display the settings for the material. You should only change the deposition rate, final thickness, and thickness limit. Typical deposition rates range from 1 to 3 angstroms per second. Ensure that the values set for the final thickness and thickness limit are set to the same value. After you have set up the material, press F6 for process directory to return to the list of materials. If you wish to set up any other materials, follow the same steps. Highlight the first material you are depositing and press F4 for select active. This will set this material as the active process. The number of the active process is displayed at the top of the screen. Press F6 for program, then press F6 again for operate when you are ready to run your process. You should wait to start depositing material until the pressure is between 10 to the negative 7 to 10 to the negative 8th tor. However, if you are not concerned with the deposition quality, you can start the process at a higher pressure. The machine, however, will not allow you to start your process until it reaches a certain minimum vacuum level. If you want to run your process at a low pressure, it may take approximately 30 to 45 minutes to pump down. When the desired pressure has been reached, click the Enable Process icon on the monitor. The red lights below the deposition controller should illuminate. If they do not, consult an IEN staff member before proceeding. When you are ready to run the process, press Start on the deposition controller. Once your process has started, take a look through the viewing port on the front of the chamber. The beam pattern should be centered in the crucible. If it is not, use the position knobs on the beam sweep controller 1 to adjust the beam. The position knobs adjust the beam longitudinally and laterally. Try to position the beam before the shutter opens if you can. When the process is complete, you can either deposit another metal or begin unloading the evaporator. If you plan to deposit another metal, wait about three minutes for the crucible to cool down from the last process. You can change metals by first pressing F6 for program and then F2 for process directory on the deposition controller. Highlight the metal you want to evaporate next and press F4 for select active, then press F6, operate. Once your process has been selected, manually switch to the crucible that you want for your second layer. Once the process has been set up, press start on the deposition controller to begin running the process. Align the beam accordingly as you did with the previous metal. Before unloading your samples, you must wait 10 minutes for the last crucible used to cool and stop glowing. Do not vent the system while the crucible is still hot. The metal will be destroyed and the crucible could potentially shatter. Also, make sure to disable the process. When the crucible has sufficiently cooled, you may vent the chamber. It may take a few minutes for the chamber to fully vent. When the chamber is finished venting, gently pull the chamber door towards you and then slide it down to its resting position. Change the fixture control speed to slow. At this point, you should remove the sample tray from the roto straight. Place the sample tray in one of the nearby stainless steel tables. Carefully remove your samples from the sample tray. When you have finished using the evaporator, vacuum the inside of the chamber to clean up any debris that may have been created during the process run. When you have finished, carefully lift the chamber door up to the closed position to seal the door. Hold the chamber door closed and select the pump down icon on the monitor. It may take up to a minute for the system to start pumping down. When it has finished, log out of the e-beam evaporator at the access controller. You should now have a good understanding of how to operate the CHJ electron beam evaporator. You should be able to vent the chamber, load samples, pump the chamber down, program the deposition controller, and run the process. If you have any questions, please contact the trainer for this equipment. Thank you for watching.